something we hope you really like. You're listening to Creating Daily. There's something wrong with you. You know that? Because you and I are like a mullet. Sid is the is the business, so he's the front part of the haircut, and then I'm the party in the back. I think they're hilarious. <laughs> it speaks to me. It's like he's saying what I'm thinking. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Creating Daily. Man, it's going to be a good day. I'm excited. It's Thursday. It's almost Friday, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Not that that means anything when you uh, work for yourself. It just means another day of working for yourself, I guess. Uh, we got a great episode. Happy Cinco de Mayo, I, I think, right? Is that right? Yeah, it's May 4th, May, May 5th. I mean, yesterday was May 4th, whatever. You know, when you do a daily live show and you show up every single day, it all just becomes a blur. Uh, but I'm really excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about how do you level up your audio and this isn't just for people who are podcasters or live streamers, uh, but this is really beneficial for people who maybe want to grow their business or grow their reach or just have fun guesting on other shows, um, news networks, for instance, um, or other podcasts, other live stream shows, those types of things. So anyway, if you're kind of curious about that, stay tuned. I'm going to share with you how to level up your audio without breaking the bank. Uh, but before we get into it, make sure you smash that subscribe button wherever you see it at um, near you. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or, well, I don't think you subscribe on Facebook, but YouTube uh, or Bullhorn or Guild or wherever, make sure you just follow or subscribe. Or if you're listening to this, after the fact, on the podcast player, uh, feel free to follow it and also leave us a rating and review uh, because I like those. I eat feedback for breakfast, okay? Uh, so let me know some of your feedback. Now, I do only have one segment, and it's the only segment that I will not miss on the show because uh, I want to leave plenty of time for us to talk about all things audio. And if people have some questions, you can jump in and ask your questions. But here we go. Creator highlights. No cooking necessary. No assembly required. It's got to be funky. All right. Today's creator highlight is brought to you by the Owl app. As you know, I've been promoting Owl for a week or so now. Uh, o W W L L is how you spell it. Go download that on your iPhone or your Android and use code BT614503 to get early access and a $10 sign up bonus. Uh, and you can monetize. If you're a creator or, or an expert, I should say, you can get paid for your expertise. Or if you need some help with something, there's a bunch of experts on there that you can pay, uh, you know, whatever their, whatever their minute charge is to ask them questions and do a phone call with them. So today's creator highlight goes to Gems with Genesis. Uh, actually, Genesis submitted this. I, I did a post on, on Instagram saying, hey, will you, I want to support people in my community, in my circle of creators and I want to promote their show. I want to highlight it on my show. And, uh, and she did. So she was one of the people who said, Hey, here, here's my show. Will you promote it? Uh, so go check out that, you know, being a part of a, a creator community is to support each other, uh, go listen to each other's shows, give each other feedback, give each other reviews, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you're, if you're joining me and you want me to highlight your creative project, feel free to get in touch with me. You can just go to creatingdaily.live, hit contact, uh, send me a little message, or you can go to onesheet.pro slash Billy Thorpe and reach out there as well. All right. So that is all I have. I don't have any other segments. I need some more creative segments, you know, so if you have any ideas, feel free to shoot them my way. Cause I'm always curious, like what would people be interested in? And I've even been listening to a lot more podcasts in in live stream shows to say what what kind of segments would I be interested in doing? Like, would that be a you know like a I don't know like a current events segment? Probably not. Like, I have a news segment, but I never really dive into it. Never really get into the news because uh, there's only so much creator news. But anyway, whatever. I'm gonna stop rambling on about all that kind of stuff, and let's get into talking about audio uh, and how to level up your audio. So this is one of the questions. I get a lot from podcasters, from live streamers, like, man, how does your audio sound so good? Now, I'm not going to talk about my setup because I've been a creator and really working on growing my podcast, growing my studio space, growing, you know, my gear, my equipment for several years. And luckily, I've been able to do that by having a podcast that's monetized, reinvesting, you know, all those kinds of things. So I'm not going to start. I'm going to talk about some of the elements that I use. But I'm not going to start off like that because that's 
you know, pretty expensive thing if you're just getting started um, and you want to just level up from, you know, from like maybe I got headphones with a lapel mic on it and I just want to show up a little bit more professional, uh, both, you know, with, with audio. We'll talk about video later, but um, today we're going to just super focus on audio. And you might ask yourself, why do I want to do that? Why would I want to have a microphone? Why would I want to make sure I have good headphones? All that kind of stuff. And the opportunity for you to be a guest on other people's podcasts, their live shows, like I mentioned earlier, maybe a, a new show or a television program, it's getting more and more, especially in this virtual, more virtual world that we're living in, uh, which we'll talk about more about that tomorrow. By the way, Chris Giles is going to be joining me about Web3 tomorrow uh, in NFTs and coins and how we can use them to monetize as creators. But the more that we move into that, the more that we're going to have opportunity to join other people in this virtual world, in this virtual space, to you know be a part of what they're doing, to be a part of their community, their audience, and to grow our audience, bring awareness about what we're doing. And so you can really do pretty small adjustments to have a huge impact on your audio uh, on your vi- on your video as well, but today I'm, I'm trying to just talk about audio. Okay, I love video, but I'm trying to talk just about audio. Uh, so I want you to think about that when you are, you know, when we're kind of going through this, and you're going, "Why would I ever do that?" Um, it works. All these products I'm going to ta- tell you about will literally do. You know, like they'll up your game on Zoom. You do a lot of Zoom calls. Do a lot of virtual meetings. Um, if you're on like Guild, if you're on Guild and you're doing a live show. Uh, it's going to up your audio quality over there. It's going to up your audio quality on Bullhorn. It's going to up your audio quality for YouTube or whatever. Uh, so think about your whole world, what you do, even phone calls, right? I hook my phone right in, which I'll show you a product that I recommend for that. Um, that's not as expensive as what I have, and I will will kind of jump into it. But even for audio phone calls, I use my uh, I use my I use my microphone. I use my sound system. So anyway, maybe I'm just nerdy, but let's jump right into this. Uh, and, and, and what kind of inspired this episode, by the way, is I was listening to a podcast and the lady that was in the podcast, um, was interested in starting her own podcast. So this is a, okay, I'm going to say podcast a lot, but this was a podcast about podcasting, talking to a lady who wanted to start a podcast that they were talking about podcasting. Okay. That's all meta. And, and so anyway, so she was talking about buying this equipment, buying this gear to just create her own content. And then all of a sudden, she was a public speaker. She's going to all these events. We all know 2020 happened, blah, blah, blah. And fast forward, and now she's, like, doing all this virtual stuff. And now she's, like, co-hosting a radio show. She's co-hosting on a TV segment. Um, And she's doing all this really because she showed up professionally with her audio gear and her video stuff and was able to present and and give them what they wanted as far as quality of content uh as far as the you know just the just the the production of content i should say um so think about that as we're kind of going through this and maybe what would fit your needs the most or maybe you didn't even realize you had needs you found this live stream out of curiosity because you're just like oh i know billy i'm gonna check it out um there might be some opportunities for you to show up uh on in other worlds so to speak in other people's worlds virtually so let's jump right into microphones. <laughs> now, I am going to bring up an Amazon page. Uh, and if you're interested in buying anything, um, my friend John Dispenza and I do have an Amazon Live. We're part of the Amazon Live program. So you can go to streamteam.live. I think it's streamteamlive.com. And that's our Amazon store. I'll bring it up. I should have put it on the screen. But this is not really like a, hey, go buy my Amazon stuff. Like, I just want to show you the products, the tools that you might need. So let's jump over to microphones um in the first microphone the, the first thing you need to know about a microphone is if you just go out and you go oh podcast microphone more than likely you're going to get populated with condenser microphones i don't know why this is you know maybe it's a thing but a condenser microphone i'm going to keep this really simple i'm going to hold up this microphone to explain now this is not a condenser but if this was a condenser microphone the audio would be picked up from all the way around this microphone all right, so all sides of it, it's it's bringing in audio. It's very sensitive, like everything inside of it's sensitive. You know, if somebody slams the door in the next room, you can hear it. All right, so that's a condenser microphone. Now, unless you have a studio quality room, which we'll talk about how to kind of sound, not sound proof, but maybe sound treat a room. But unless you have like a studio quality room um, that is soundproof or very well sound treated, 
you might not get the best audio from this. You might get a lot of echoes. You might get a lot of um, background noise and outside noise and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is a dynamic microphone as well as the one I'm, I'm talking into. And what the beauty of it is it only picks up like pretty much like facing into it. So this microphone I'm talking into, you can see I'm talking directly into it. I might have it at a, you know, like a 45 degree angle, or I try to at least, and I talk through it. So you don't hear all these plop, 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 plosives or Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers or whatever that's called. Um, so you don't hear all those plosives. So I'm, I'm speaking across it like this. However, all the sound is really right here. So if I move over this way, Hey, what's up guys? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can still hear me, but it's not as clear. It's not as concise. So if I'm, I'm moving around it, I'm moving up here I'm behind it. So you can kind of see as I move around it, it's picking up less and less audio and it's blocking out all the, you know, doing a really good job blocking out all this and all the stuff behind me. So similar to this microphone, it's, it's sensitive here, but all around here, it's not going to be. So you want that. You want a dynamic microphone. Now, I, sorry, I got a little too nerdy there and I'm not even that nerdy about it. Okay. I, I really am not an audiophile. Um, I just want to tell you like buy a dynamic microphone and you might say, okay, now which one? Now, this is where it gets interesting because there's kind of two different ones that you can pick up here. You can pick up, um, nowadays anyway, you can pick up a USB uh, microphone, dynamic microphone, um, or you can pick up an XLR microphone, which needs some additional equipment. But before we jump into that one, let's jump into what I would recommend for a, uh, a USB microphone. So, oh, actually, I got the wrong one selected here. Let me look this up. This is an ATR... 2100X, uh, that says 2200X. Okay, whatever, it, it brought up the right one. So let's jump into this one. So as you can see here, if you're looking at your Amazon listings, this is Audio-Technic AT, ATR 2100X USB cardioid microphone, and this is a dynamic microphone. This is the word that you're looking for is dynamic, and you want to make sure that you buy, unless, unless you have a sound treater room. But the cool thing about this, and I don't know if they're going to show pictures, is this is USB and XLR. So uh, you guys know what a USB port looks like. Let me see if they have any other additional pictures down here. Oh yeah, so you can see this picture right here in the middle. So this is the USB-C, this is a headphone jack, this is an audio adjustment, and then this three-prong system right here is for XLR. But you can see where they have this set up right beside of a computer. Um, you may, depending on what software you're recording with, be able to hook it right into your phone. Um, a lot of different options with this. Now I'm going to switch back to this camera and show you that this is the, um, oh, let's see if it'll do it here. We'll see. Is it going to do it? Okay, cool. So you can see these three prongs here. Now this is called XLR. I, I'm not going to get into all of it. Um, but the cool thing about these microphones that I'm showing you is you can use it as a USB microphone and go right into your computer, go right into your DAW, your sound system, your live stream. So if you're live streaming on Guild, you know, or somewhere like this, then you can, uh, you can push that audio there and just literally select it in your microphone settings when you open up the program. So like StreamYard or Ecamm or whatever, it'll recognize that audio and it'll be able to bring it right in. And then as you progress in your knowledge or you progress in your, you know, you're like, okay, I like this. This is cool, but I want a little more control. Then you can add an interface and you're already set up because it has that, it has this XLR jack right there. So it's already set up for that. So this is uh this is a good microphone, the ATR 2100X. I would definitely recommend it. Um, I have the ATR 2100, so a little bit older version and it looks like this is USB-C, so uh, really good microphone. It's like 100 bucks. The next one is uh, a Samsung Q2U. Now, this is very similar to the one I just showed you. It's a little bit cheaper, about 30 bucks cheaper, 20 30 bucks, whatever. Uh, but same thing, you can plug this thing right into your computer, uh, and you can see similar outputs there. Now, this is like a different USB model or a USB uh, port, but you can see same same situation there, and you can kind of grow into it. And this is what I would definitely recommend for, you know, somebody who is a beginner, somebody who you're not very techy, you just want to plug and play, and this is going to do it. You could literally plug it in, select it out of an options menu for your audio settings in your Mac or your Windows machine, and literally be going 
going for it. You're done. You're like, you're ready to rock and roll. All right. So that, that is kind of a basic microphone. Now what I'll do is we'll jump into, um, we'll jump into another microphone here as well. That, so I told you about the Samsung ATR or the ATR 2100X, told you about the Samsung Q2U. Now let's jump over to Sure because you might be like, hey, I want a little bit better of a microphone, um, but, you know, I can spend a little bit more money. You, you know, maybe you got a $260, $270 range. Uh, you can pick up one of these. I'm trying to see what package. It doesn't matter. You know, whichever one, like you can shop around for it. But this is the the Shure, let me put it on the right screen so you can see it. This is the Shure MV7 USB microphone. Uh, it comes with a tripod. Um, you, you might need that. I'm going to tell you about something else that I actually recommend over that. Uh, but this is this is the MV7. This is Shure. This is one of their newer microphones. And the cool thing is it's made out of the same components as this like $400 microphone. Um, and actually, some people will use this cover that goes over this microphone on that Shure MV7 and get a very similar result um, from that. So, you know, once again, this is 269 because it's got this little Shure tripod or whatever. Uh, but similar, similar to the other ones that I showed you, this has your headphone jack, your XLR, and your USB. So you can, it's great. You can plug it in USB, and then as you grow, you can put it into... Um, your computer. Now this thing does have some uh, settings and software and all that kind of stuff that comes with it, which is kind of cool. So you can really, unlike the other two microphones, you can dive into the settings a little bit and kind of dial it in for your voice, dial it in the way that you want it and, and, and really like create some magic that way. So and that's MV7. That's a little bit of a step up, uh, you know, price wise and, and quality wise as well, though, not just price, but quality as well. Now, the next thing here that we'll kind of jump into, so those, those are all kind of USB microphones, what I would recommend. Now, let's say we're going to go into, you know, just XLR. So, no USB, but just XLR. It's got this plug here with the three prongs. And, and let's talk about those microphones, but they need some additional equipment, which we'll also talk about um, as, as we jump into them. So, let me, I'm switching screens back here. I don't have, I need more monitors. When I get back to North Carolina in about 20 days or so, um, or or for that setup, probably more than 20 days, uh, I'll, I'll have some. So let's look at the Shure SM58. Uh, this is an iconic microphone. It's actually the one I have in my hand that, I, that I've been using here. So let's jump over, and let's talk about this one for, for 89 bucks. This microphone, you've probably seen it on just about every – vocal stage, every comedy stage, you know, that you've probably ever been to. I know you've seen, you know, people singing with this, backup singers. I mean, this thing is a classic microphone and it is super duper heavy. It's, I mean, it's like, yeah, I've traveled with this thing. I dropped this thing. Um, it's pretty dope. You can actually, you can take it apart and clean it. So if you own like a, if you own like a uh, bar or restaurant or something like that, um, if, if you're a podcaster with a side job of owning a bar, um, you can you can clean this out and it's got you can spray this out and clean it, sanitize it, and let it dry, um, all those kinds of things. So anyway, and I'm sure you could clean all these other ones as well, but I just I just know that because I've done that before. Uh, but yeah, this this SM7 or 58 rather the SM58, super great microphone. Um, it sounds, you know what I should have I should have probably plugged it in and showed you how it sounds because in my opinion. It gives these other microphones a run for their money. Like this is a $90, $100 microphone. This is a $400 microphone. And I would use this microphone and not buy a $400 one, which I didn't pay full price, by the way, uh, just full transparency. Um, I would probably use this, but I just don't like the way it looks on camera, as you can see. Hey, what's up? It looks goofy, in my opinion. So whatever. So, so I like the 58, and I want to be like Joe Rogan. Okay, that's what he is, or the uh, the 7B. I just want to be like Joe. Uh, make me more like, no, I'm just messing. Uh, anyway, so that's the, the, that's the 58. This is a little bit of a step up. Now let's jump into, let me look at it, what I got next here. I'm jumping around. All right, cool. So that's the 58. Oh, okay, so here's another one. Here is the... And I'm just picking out Sure products because I, I really like them. I've used them. 
Um, and this is the MV7X. Now, this is the same microphone that I just showed you, <clears throat> excuse me, but it is 150 bucks or $149. And, and it is, uh, it's just XLR. So that's pretty cool as well. So you can, you don't have to have all the USB stuff and it doesn't have all the um, settings and all that kind of stuff that you can mess with. So this is just an XLR mic. Super good, but once again, you need a little bit of an interface. And and just for giggles, I will, I'm kind of showing you good, better, and best, if you will. So just for just for giggles, I'll show you the, uh, the 7B because you might want it. Maybe you've already you know, leveled up or whatever you want to like really level up. Uh, this is a, a great microphone. I use it. This is what I'm using right now. And I, I think it's awesome. So, uh, you know, some people give it crap, but this is the, this is the microphone that Michael Jackson recorded thriller on. So if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what here, let me jump over here. I'm not even showing you guys pictures cause I'm getting distracted, but this is the seven B it's awesome. It does show you, uh, or it is the one that Michael Jackson used for thriller, uh, but broadcasting, podcasting, recording, I know musician friends, studio owners who have this, and these things are rugged. I throw it in my carry-on and take it around when I fly. Uh, it's it's pretty awesome. And it comes with some good accessories. I think my I think my three-year-old has this, but I have this big poofy one um, that will block out some more additional sound and give you a little bit more of that radio voice if you want it. But anyway, that's not why I bought it. I, bu I just bought it because I, I got a good deal on it from a friend of mine. And so, so all these are, are dynamic and they are all XLR. Now with XLR, so I feel like I'm just talking a lot. I apologize. Uh, by the way, feel free to say hello in any of the chats near you and we'll, we'll see what you're up to. Uh, I'm just going to check out, I got so many windows open here. I'm just going to check out, uh, make sure if I got any chats over here. Nope, no chats here. Okay, great. Um, all right, cool. Anyway, something's not working, but I don't care because if it doesn't work, I just keep going. Uh, so so now let's talk about some interfaces. Let's talk about a, a few different ones that I would recommend. Uh, so the first one that I'm going to recommend is a Scarlett 2i2. Now, this is this company, Focus, right? They've been around forever. It's probably one of the most iconic um, interfaces that you, can, that you can buy. And this is going to create that connection that you need from your XLR microphone into your computer. So it's just called a USB interface. Um, super great. I used to own the 2i2 right here. I'm going to actually pull this up without all the stuff so we can take a look at it. And you can see right here, this is two channels. So you can get your um, two XLR microphones. And then this is like a dual jack. So if you are like a musician... Um, you could plug your, you know, guitar into there, your keyboard into there, whatever you want, whatever it takes a quarter inch jack, you can plug it in. Um, and it's pretty easy. Like you can see this green circle and you can see this red. So green, if you turn it up and it's green, you're good. If you turn it up too much, the gain and it goes red, you're not good. So you just turn it down. Uh, it has a little bit of an air effect, you know, you can switch between instrument and XLR, um, it's, it also has phantom power, 48 volt phantom power, which uh, you may need if you got this seven B. Um, so this is a really good, really super solid interface. There's a couple things I don't like about it. You know, one thing it doesn't, and this isn't really made for podcasting cause this has been around forever. Um, but it is made, it, it doesn't have mix minus and it doesn't have a way to plug in your phone. Uh, so those are the two things I don't really care, but it does have monitors out in the back if you're a musician and you're like, I got, you know, I want to do an in-studio thing, I would probably recommend this. If you want to do virtual stuff and Zoom calls and, you know, all that kind of crap, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily get this one. And this is the reason why I sold it and bought something else. So so we can talk about what, you know, what I would definitely recommend for that, which is I just wanted to show you this in case there are some musicians that watch this or whatever. Um, but the PodTrack... P4. This is what I would recommend probably for 90% of people trying to either get their audio established. They want to interface, but they don't want to spend a ton of money. Um, for the $220 price point, this thing is phenomenal. 
Um, I have one. My co-host currently uses it because I have the Rodecaster Pro, which I'll show you in a minute. But this thing is so dope. It has, uh, first of all, it has four headphone or microphone inputs. So you, you so you can plug up to four microphones in here. It's it's a really almost the size of like one of those like old school shavers. It's probably like a little bit bigger. I mean, that grip is probably the same as my phone, a little bit bigger, not very heavy. Throw it in a bag, throw it in a carry-on and, and kind of go for it. It does feel a little plasticky, but you know, it is what it is. And Zoom products always kind of feel that way. So anyway, it's got four XLR inputs. It has four, as you can see up here, these are four different volume controls. And then right under those volume controls, you do have a microphone, then phantom power. Um, so regular dynamic mic. And if you need phantom power, which I'm still on my list to talk to you about, uh, that is for all four channels, you have those options. And then for channel three, if you, you see you toggle this little switch over to phone and there's a TRRS mix with mix minus that you can plug into there. Uh, and then also there's a USB on channel four. So you can plug that into your computer. Oh my gosh, you don't see it. There we go. All right, so here's all the stuff I was talking about because I'm trying to live switch and talk at the same time. But Phantom Power, regular microphones for all four channels. Phone channel, switch it all the way over. Uh, that little dial or little switch there, switch it all the way over. And you can plug in a TRRS to TRRS cable and talk on your phone. Take live phone calls. Set up a Google Voice account and bring in phone calls. Um, or if somebody wants to do a phone interview with you or you're the interviewee, uh, you can call in from this device and get your really nice microphone sound. And then also over here with USB. So then you just flick it over and there is a setting inside of this little, um, this little panel here that you have to turn on what's called USB mix minus. And so basically that is the mix minus yourself. So you don't get uh, a loop back into your ears or whatever. I, I don't know all the technical terms. Somebody's going to grill me for that in the comments. I'm sure. Uh, but it, that's all you got. It's all you need to know, right? Just like click it over, go change that setting. You change it once you leave it. There it is. Uh, then move down real quick for mute buttons. So if you want to mute a couple of channels and I will tell you on this particular device, I have noticed that these, uh, channels, if you are using like channel one and you have these three other ones unmuted, you want to turn them down or mute them because they will give you a little bit of ruckus, a little bit of noise there. So, uh, you definitely want to do that. What is up? Knee is in the house uh, over in the chat. What's up, Knee? Good to see you, man. He says, it's an awesome recorder to have. I 100% agree. I think they're phenomenal. I, it's like one of my favorite ones, uh, and I could probably use it all the time, but I got, I had a little, anyway, I won't go into the story, but I had a little studio and decided that the Rocast Pro would better serve my clients. However, I may sell it and go back to something similar to this. All right, now let's keep moving on here about the Podtrack P4 because it is pretty awesome. All right, so then you move down here to A, B, C, and D. Those are all sound pads, so you can program them to make different sounds. So if you wanted to make like a little cash register sound or, a, you know, whatever sound or, a, you know, bleep out whatever, uh, you can you can set up to, up to four of those. Uh, and then it also has that little dial right there. So that's the sound pad volume control. Then there's like menu stuff, toggling menu. These kind of are like dual purpose, like play record, you know, all that. And then also uh, helps you navigate through the menu. Uh, and then my favorite part, which this sounds kind of weird to say my favorite part, but unlike the Scarlett 2i2, there's not different headphone outputs. So sometimes you get to split those headphone outputs, but this has four different ones. Uh, which is just huge. So everyone can set their own levels, uh, you know, to the loudness that they want. All right. So we talked about that. We talked about this. Uh, it does have a full size memory card, which is different than some other uh, interfaces. So that's definitely one of my favorite parts about it. The Rodecaster Pro has a micro memory card or whatever SD card. And I almost lose it. Uh, jump over here really quickly. You can see this is the power button all the way. I wish I had a little thing, but right there, that looks like a little button. That is the power button. The next hold down or the first hold down here is uh, where you plug in your phone. So you plug in your TRRS. And then if you want to, I don't recommend it, but you can actually get an adapter and turn these two uh, 
the, I'm going to call them holes, <laughs> these two plugs or two inputs into bl a Bluetooth transmitter adapter. Uh, now let's talk about how do you power this thing. First, for, first up, you can see here that you can power it with two, uh, two batteries, two AA batteries. Uh, this is pretty cool. No one likes AA batteries, though. Like, are you kidding me? Um, I don't want to carry them around. I don't want to remember if they're going to go in or out or whatever. Uh, but then you jump over here, and you can see that this has a DC 5-volt uh, port, so you can plug that into a wall. You can plug it into your computer and power it. And then also, you can plug this into a power bank. So you can literally power it four different ways. Uh, so from your computer, once again, from a wall charger or a wall adapter, uh, a power bank, or those batteries. And if I'm not mistaken, if you have the power bank plugged in and you have AA batteries in there and the power bank dies, it'll switch over to the AA batteries uh, and it won't stop recording. I believe I'm saying that right. If I'm not, somebody correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's how that thing works. So anyway, that is the, uh, you know, one last look here. That is the Podtrack P4. Totally recommend this. So if you got like a Podtrack P4 and then you got like a, a, a Sure SM58 and an a XLR cable, I think you're crushing it. I think you, I mean, that would be, you'd be totally happy with that, um, you know, whatnot. But once again, if you wanted to, level up even higher, then you could always grab, you know, a next step up, which let's see, what do I have up here? What do I got listed? So I talked about the Scarlet, talked about the Podtrack P4. I'll talk about the Roadcaster just because I have one. Um, this is not, and, and this might be, you know, for some people who already maybe have a Podtrack P4 or something, and you want to level up a little bit with a Roadcaster. So let me, uh, let me bring this up here. Oh, actually, you know what? They got some pretty good deals on these. Uh, let's see. Where's one at? I just want one without all the stuff. All right, so you can see here is the Rodecaster. Now, this thing, compared to the PodTrack, um, is way more powerful. I mean, it's got a lot more, and I can't go into it in this video or this live stream, but it has, like, a ton of uh, settings on the inside as far as, you know, all your um, all your are your presets and I'm trying to like toggle through it so I can actually talk about it like I'm a pro. Um, but it has like multi-track, it has all kinds of processing, it has mix minus, it has um, like an effects mode. Like it has a ton of, like when I say a ton of stuff, there's a group in Clubhouse on Tuesday nights that it's literally a Roadcaster pro group and they just help people with this. And so they've helped me a ton uh, and it is four channel. It's got USB. It's got your smartphone, your Bluetooth. It's got compressors. It's got everything that you can possibly think of. Uh, minus a couple of, uh, like, I don't think it has, like, effects. I can't remember. It's, and maybe it's not stereo. So some people lose their mind about that. Um, but once again, it is a four channel mixer as well. Uh, you can see here it's got your four you, uh XLR channels, there we go, a USB, and you have to turn on Mix Minus inside of here as well. Uh, then it has your phone channel, and I'll show you how to plug that up in a minute. And then it has Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth, uh, you know what, maybe if you're playing music through your computer into a Bluetooth speaker, but I do not recommend bringing Bluetooth into here and, uh, anyway, or bringing your phone into there rather via Bluetooth. Anyhow. Uh, then it has your slider here for your sound effects, and then you have all these banks, and these are all different sound effects. So you can, yeah, once again, you know, I got I got a bunch of them here that you can play music, like I, I'll just play some music. You know, whatever, so you get a little music, and you do a little, little cricket action, little magical crickets, um, all those kind of fun things. And so these these can be a lot of fun, maybe a little distracting at times. Uh, maybe I spent a little too much time thinking about like, oh, what sound effects do I want? Uh, but you, and, and it has multiple banks within the software. So all this is like a digital interface. Anyway, if you're just starting out, probably don't need this right off the bat. Unless you're just like super serious and you're like, I want to produce just a solid, you know, radio show style, you know, show with stingers and all that stuff. I would definitely recommend this. Um, and then we'll jump to the back real quick. Oh, let's talk about one more thing on the front. Headphones. So there's all your four headphone controls, and then you have a main output control as well. Now I'll jump to the back really quick. Oh, that's the underneath. Let's jump to the back. You get your power button, 
you, you do have this cool power, uh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know the technical term, but you plug it in and you can screw it on so it's not going to come off. So if your kid runs by and pulls on the cable, it's not coming off of there. Um, maybe a roadcaster comes off the table, but your cable will not come out. Uh, and then also they make a little adapter where you can plug it in. I think it's like 20 bucks. You can plug it in to a power bank with that adapter. And then your USB here and then micro SD, which I'm not a big fan of. Then your left and right outputs, your four headphone outputs. And then that phone is where you plug your TRRS cable. And for some people who don't know what I'm talking about, and let me uh, let me bring it up here and show you. Basically, it's just a uh, a 3.5 millimeter cable. Is it going to focus? 3.5 millimeter cable with three rings around it. Now that looks the same on both sides, and this is just my little iPhone adapter. It needs all three rings because you got your left, right audio and your microphone, and then you just plug in your adapter, plug it into your iPhone if that's what you use and plug the other side that looks just like that side into your Rodecaster or the Pontrac P4, which I just showed you. So that is a way you can do you can do that as well. Um, so, yeah, super, super cool device here. Once again, I bought it when I was, uh, you know, later on after I've been podcasting for a little bit and had a studio. And then there's your four locking XLR inputs. So yeah, pretty cool. It does take up a bit of real estate. I would say it, you know, if I had it on my desk, if I had it on my desk just regular, it'd probably take up like a good third of my desk. Okay, so it's not the smallest thing. The Pontiac P4 takes up a little bit more space than my iPhone does. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool device. If you're like really looking to go to the next level, that's what I would recommend. Or if you, you know, want to do it like a studio or something of that nature. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, all right. And then there's the Tascam Mix Cast 4. I don't know that much about it. Um, it's just on my list to briefly mention. Now, now you, you got your, your microphone. So maybe you got your USB microphone. Maybe you got your XLR microphone. Um, if, you have a, if you have this microphone, the 7B, you're going to need a little additional power. And so on those inputs or those interfaces... I talked about phantom power, and it's like plus 48 volts or whatever. Um, for the 7B, you need a FET head or a cloud lifter or a dynamite stick or whatever they call them. And it's basically just a, you know, a little device that will, will power your microphone and give it a little more juice uh, so, so you're not cranking all your gain and all your volume on your board. So that's, what you, uh, that's probably what you need. Um, Let's see. Nee says that's why you don't put your roadcaster on your desk. I mean, where else are you gonna put it? Like, you want to reach it, right? Or what? Nee probably has it mounted on his wall, or or he's got it lifted up on some kind of crane or something. He's all kind of techy over there. So, um, Nee, I would love to see what you set up. Maybe that's an Instagram post for you today. There you go. Challenge accepted. All right. Now let's talk about that. You know, so if you, oh, so once again, if you need some power for your microphone, I recommend a fit head. Uh, they're about 89 bucks. So, uh, but then a cloud lifter is like 150, 200, depends on which one you get, 250 maybe. Um, so, so anyway, but now the next thing you want to think about so you got your USB microphone, you know, you get your XLR microphone or, or whatever, you get your interface if you need that combo. Now you want to get this microphone, in my opinion, off of your desk. Okay. So you want to mount it onto something, you don't want to be holding it. So if I'm holding this, and once again, probably just a bad presentation here. I should have plugged it in. I, I, I'll get all kinds of hand noise. And then maybe if I'm talking and I have a Joe Rogan-style podcast where I'm talking for three hours, holding the microphone like this, sitting across the table from somebody and having them do the same, you know, it's not going to work. Or sitting, you know, on a Zoom call, holding your mic, and it's getting all kinds of hand noise. You're getting fatigued, arm fatigue, all this stuff just get something to, to mount it onto. So let me show you what I use. And my friend, John Dispenza has, uh, has really turned me on to this. And this is what I'm using right now. So it's called the, I think it's called the mounted boom arm. Let me jump over here and show it to you. Similar to the blue compass, uh, you know, that, that blue, that Yeti makes or that same company blue compass makes, I guess is what it's called. Uh, this thing's like 69 bucks. Um, 
I, you know, I was at, oh, at first like, oh, man, I don't want to pay $70 for a boom arm, but I've had all kinds of them. I've had the cheap $20 ones. I've had, um, you know, the $50, I mean, even 50 bucks. But I bought this thing. It's pretty good. There, You know, this doesn't have, like, a lot of adjustments, and I'll show you one that does. But for the price, it does a good job. It holds up my microphone. Uh, it, it holds up a... Uh, a, a Rode pod mic, which weighs about two pounds. It'll hold that up fairly well, uh, really well, actually. And and also, when you're looking at these boom arms, you want to look at how they are mounted. So if you check this one out, down here at the bottom, it's mounted where the arm and the weight is on the inside of the table, not on the outside of the table. Now, I have a couple other ones here on my desk, that are mounted on the outside, and it's just putting all the weight to the outside of the table. Uh, so you don't, you know, it's like just putting. Weird, it's like a weird. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like a weird pressure that, like, why did somebody do this? Um, so make sure that all of this weight is clipped inside of the table, and it's actually on the table versus off the side of the table. If that makes sense, maybe I could show you one that is off the table. Let me look. Let me look here and see if I can find one. Okay, yeah, well, let's see, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Perfect example. What you don't want. You don't want this hanging off the side of your table. You don't want your microphone hanging off the side of your table. You want it to be pushed over your table. So now let's look and see if we can find, like, a Rode boom arm. And now this thing is going to be, this thing's going to be pretty heavy, too. Well, this is 100 bucks. This isn't bad. Actually, I'd probably buy this one, the PSA-1, over if it was available it looks like it is. I would probably buy this one over the one I just mentioned. Um, there's some pros and cons about it. You can check it out, you know, on YouTube or go to Amazon and, and watch somebody's live video. Um, but I think some people get their fingers pinched in here, <laughs> you know, between those two things. But it does have this adjustable head here that I really do like. I'll probably end up picking it up a couple of these. And some of them you can even mount you know, like this. You can just mount it, cut a hole in your desk if you have, like, a wooden desk or whatever. And, uh, and mount it there wherever you want to on your desk for more of a permanent, you know, situation. All right. So so that's the one. That they have a new one, a new PSA one. I think it's like a P, I don't know if it's a PSA 2. Oh, yeah, here it is. I'm going to take a quick little swig of coffee before I rant about this. All right. So now that I almost spilled coffee all over my stuff, this is the Rode PSA One Plus, and uh, and I was gonna get this microphone uh, boom arm because I watched a video on it from Tom Buck, and I really liked it. And it was awesome. It was great. But why in the world do you just put your ginormous logo on here like three, four times? It annoys the heck out of me. I can't. I'm like, dude, I don't want your branding all over my face, just like that picture right there, like. Ugh. Anyway, I'm not gonna rant about it, but those are like cloth covers to maybe keep you from pinching yourself or whatever. And they get those little plastic, you know, adapters there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna rant about it. I've ranted about it enough. But anyway, so I would definitely recommend getting some type of a boom arm to hook your microphone onto, and it keeps it off the table. It's gonna keep it less from getting banged up or being real close to your hands. Uh, where, you know, like if you're hitting your table, which if I hit my table hard enough, you're going to hear it. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's just practice of like using a microphone and go back and listen to your audio. and like, what is that booming noise? And then you realize like you get into it and you smash your hands like, uh, you know, like your, uh, like your Donkey Kong, like throwing barrels or something, um, into the table. So you don't want to do that. All right. So think about that. Think about getting you, you know, this could be an easy way get a USB microphone, uh, get a boom arm, get it off the table for the most part, and get it out of the middle of your table where you're more than likely to hit your hands. Okay, so that, there we go. So we've talked about microphones. We've talked about interfaces. We've talked about boom arms. Now let's get to the most important part of audio, and these are going to be your headphones. Okay, this is the most important thing. If you do nothing at all, if you don't buy a microphone, if you don't buy a boom arm, if you don't buy anything, I want you to get some headphones. <laughs> if you want to be a guest on somebody's show, get some stinking headphones. I can't tell you how many people will come on to a show that I'm hosting, you're co-hosting, you're producing, or whatever, 
and they just don't have headphones, and I literally just don't understand it. Um, it's like, it, what it's going to do is going to prevent all this looping back. It's going to prevent all this stuff that's just like, you know, like, you know, like for instance, like if I'm if I'm on this side of the microphone and I don't have head and I don't have any any way to sound isolate, your voice is going to come through my computer. It's going to go back out of my out of my uh, uh, speakers back into the microphone and causing a feedback for you. And you've probably heard this on Zoom calls. You've probably heard this on interviews and live shows. If you've listened to a particular podcast that I co-host, I know you've heard it because people just don't have headphones. But if you want to show up, this is a way that you can show up. Really simple purchase. Now, you don't have to spend a million bucks on headphones. Um, I'm going to talk about these because I've, I've been wearing them for a while and I like them. Uh, you can do over the ears. You can do in ears like this. Um, you can do the cheap ones you just put on your stinking earbud. Like it costs five bucks. Like just do something to keep that sound from looping back and forth. So let's jump over to the ones that I have. Uh, these are the Shure SC215 Pros. Um, and these are sound isolating earphones. And I got the black ones for whatever reason. Uh, I don't really know why I did that. I should have got the clear ones because the clear ones, you can like not even see them. Uh, I'm actually pretty confused sometimes when I, I get a live streamer on. I'm like, hey, dude, where's your headphones? They're like, oh, they're right here. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't see that. Uh, these are super dope. They come with a lot of fun products, uh, a lot of little earbuds, adjustments. It did take me a while to get used to the um, – it did take me a while to get used to to them being in my ears. And if I'm smiling a lot or laughing a lot and it's like, you know, moving my ears around, like it might be a little uncomfortable after a while. But I've literally worn these – probably for three or four months, I think, uh, for hours every day. I've listened to music in them. I've done the, these types of things in them every day. You guys see me wearing them. Uh, really great for the price, you know, 99 bucks. Super, super great. Um, I love them. And, and you don't have to get, there's like, I can't remember the brand, but my wife used to have some because she plays music. And, and so where she played music at, that had an in-ear system. And she had like this cheap $20 pair and they were awesome. So uh, you could try a couple pair out, whatever. I mean, I just went with the sure ones because I heard, heard so many good things about them. Uh, so that is it. That is, that is basically, you know, how you can level up your live stream or your podcast or, or maybe you are an author or a speaker or a public speaker. Or maybe you, maybe you just haven't done anything yet. Maybe you are just like, I have a message. I want to share it. This is a really easy way for you to get started as a content creator. Uh, and a lot of people will get hung up on the tech and the tech doesn't have to be hard. Um, just get you a, a Bluetooth microphone and, or not Bluetooth microphone. Don't do that. Don't get a Bluetooth microphone. Okay. Uh, get you a USB microphone, plug it into your computer and go wild and just record whatever you want to. You more than likely have a recording device or recording software on your computer Start recording, show up on Zoom calls better, more professional, uh, show up in you know meetings, whatever it looks like for you. Uh, so that is, that's it. This is how to level up your audio um, or, ch or cheap and awesome. So Nee says in the chat that, uh, that, that in-ear microphones are cheap or headphones are cheap and awesome. And I agree, they're really not that expensive. Um, you know, once again, these had took me a while to get used to. Uh, it's kind of like you put a ring on your finger or a necklace or something, and it's just kind of like, what is that? What's touching me? Uh, it does take a little bit to get used to there. So uh, really appreciate everybody jumping in, joining on all the different platforms that we're on. Uh, feel free to, to you know, leave us a message, leave us a review uh, if you're listening to this podcast. Um, and if you are listening to the podcast, particularly this one, you may want to go check out the YouTube channel. You can go look at creatingdaily.live um, and you can find all the, the go to the watch tab or whatever, or, or daily.live, creatingdaily.live slash watch. And you can check out all the places that you can watch the show. Um, and then also, if you want to purchase any of these products and you want to support the show and you want to support me as a creator, you can go to streamteamlive.com. That's going to take you to my Amazon store. And there you can see, or yeah, to my Amazon store, it's right. And there you can see all kinds of like small shoppable videos that we've created. You can see live streams that we've done and you can really, really see all the products that we, and I say we, my, my 
co-host for that project. Uh, John, he and I are working over there, and we're getting ready to add some more stuff to that store. So hit that follow button over there on Amazon Live as well. And uh, and Nee says to shop used markets. This is very, um, I don't, yeah, if you want to. I don't, this day and age, I'm not using anybody else's microphone. Definitely not headphones. Like, that gross me out. Um, but, yeah, like Boom Arms, stuff like that, Rodecaster Pro, uh, Project P4. You can find this stuff on Facebook Marketplace is a good place to find it. Um, maybe eBay might be a good place. Cra- the Craigslist? Is the Craigslist still a thing? Is that still a thing? I don't know. Where's my co-host? I need a co-host to talk about Craigslist. Um, so I'm not really sure. But, yeah, that's a good point, Need to, to shop those used markets because a lot of people got into podcasting in 2020. A lot of people got into podcasting in 2020, and now a lot of people in 2022 are not podcasting anymore. So more than likely, they probably have some stuff laying around that they will hawk your way for a little bit of nothing. Uh, so that is a very good, um, very good strategy there. So hopefully this has brought some value to you. If it has, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, and uh, just hit all the buttons and come back tomorrow because I got my friend Chris Giles on the show. He has been diving into NFTs. He's got an NFT project that he's working on. So we're going to talk to him about that and then also talk to him, like, how can we as creators monetize through Web3 uh, coins? How do we create creator coins and Web3 and NFTs and crypto this and meta that and Facebook hates podcasting and they pod faded as I talked about earlier. I don't know. All those fun things will kind of jump into them. Um, so, yeah. So, go check out the show and subscribe. Appreciate it. Go tell a friend. But uh, until we see you tomorrow, go hit record. Your message matters. And this is why I do this show is because I want to inspire you and encourage you that if you have something on the inside of you that's just like, man, I got to tell somebody. I, I want to share. I want to I want to encourage somebody or whatever. I want to tell my story. If tech is leaving you in the dust, don't let it, okay? Reach out to me. Reach out to Nee in the chat if you're if you're over here on YouTube. Uh, find Nee. Reach out to him. He's an audio tech guy. He does podcast stuff. He uh, is a, a producer and all these fun things. And these people want to help. Like, we want to help you get your message out there because that's what really matters. And that's the whole reason I did this episode is so you can show up more professional and get more opportunities to get your voice heard. All right, what's up? Oh, Charles Higgins, what's going on, my man? Uh, good to see you. Just about to shut down this live chat. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to hit a chat nearest to you uh, if you're joining or if you just want to say hello. And by the way, go to creatingdaily.live and go to watch. And you and go follow me on Guild. It's a new platform I'm going live on. They got a really cool live streaming platform. Um, I don't use all the, the, the bells and whistles that it has. Um, I'm trying to brainstorm on how to do that a little bit better uh, as, I'm, as I'm working with them and giving them some feedback. Uh, but go check it out and follow me over there. It's creating daily wherever you can find it. And, uh, yeah, that is it for me. Go hit record, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.